Hello, all. Uh, it's Leilani speaking again, and I am still a white woman with long, dark hair and big old glasses on my face, gesticulating aggressively at the camera. Um, I am just providing some quick context for our land acknowledgement um, before we head into our performance by Sage Seeker. So as I mentioned earlier during our first land acknowledgement kicking off the event, we are going to make sure to acknowledge the people's lands and histories of each of the territories we now know as the six New England states. The next state represented by the fabulous ensemble of Sage Seeker is Connecticut. We are honored to have collaborated with a Connecticut-based ensemble, Heartbeat Ensemble, for the in-person portion of our convening last week. The land acknowledgement with uh, Grace from Sage, Thir Sage Seeker uh, is actually going to be their land acknowledgement because both organizations do share the space known as Hartford, Connecticut, as well as other Connecticut areas. So I am going to share my screen and I am going to uh, present a pre-recorded acknowledgement from Godfrey Simmons, who is the artistic director and a founder of Heartbeat Ensemble. Let me make sure I can do that now. Um, really quickly, sorry to interrupt Leilani. Um, this is Derek speaking. Um, and I just wanted to mention that we do have live captions available you can open those by clicking live transcript on the bottom of your Zoom screen or clicking the link that I just posted in the chat. Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know where the sound went, but I have the actual file. So if you all will give me just one second, I will pull that up and play the actual file from my computer instead of the link. Sorry, all. I'm having a hard time with the sound specifically. It's also not playing right from the file. Uh, fortunately, the ensemble does have their land acknowledgement on their website, which I will paste into the chat and will also read. Um, and I will be happy to post the recording once I have the sound figured out in Whova for this performance session so that you all can see Godfrey offer it um, as intended. So this is from the Heartbeat Ensemble in Hartford, Connecticut. We live, work, learn, and commune on stolen land. This land on which we gather is the occupied, unceded, seized territory of the Mohegan, Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Golden Hill, Pogsucket, and I'm not actually sure how to say this people's name, so I'm going to post it rather than mispronounce. Skaktikoke. Thank you, Kida. We also acknowledge the tribes with us in spirit and ancestors, the Podunk, the, I'm going to post these names again so that Kida can help me with pronunciation. The Sakiak, the Podunk, and the Tunixus. Thank you. 
We acknowledge the grave harm that colonialism brought to these lands, in particular, the erasure of both indigenous and African identities, not only under slavery, but via racist laws that segregated all peoples into binary classification of white and black. We honor the spirit and ancestors who have lived and do live now at these intersections of identity and experience. This acknowledgement is the very beginning of a process of learning our obligations as guests in this territory. We invite you to ask yourselves, as we are, these questions. What are the Indigenous protocols involved in being a guest? What are our responsibilities? What responsibilities do our hosts have toward us, and are we making space for those responsibilities to be exercised? How will we incorporate what we learn from our hosts? To what extent are our activities and events benefiting our hosts? Going to ask for a moment for us to contemplate those questions. And thank you all for grace in the face of showing up for the work, even if it's uh, messy and in pieces. Great spirit, great spirits, I call you in the most humbling of reverence to guide me, my each step, my each breath, my each movement, to clear this space of any ill will, any harm or unnecessary pain, to cleanse this space for those of us who come here willing willing to share our stories guide me great spirit as i prepare this space with protection with certainty and kindness to give them this rare moment in our violent world to release their grief and admirations that we may all have the heart to bear witness to each other to see each other in spirit beyond our bodies i thank you great spirit for your guidance with this amethyst. I open myself to your divinity in me and may this provide my invited story sharers and fellow curanderas to open themselves up to their greatest connections to you. With these dead flowers, I thank all of you, our ancestors, whom have lived and laughed and loved and grew food and medicine, who gave life to generations, the curanderas of our past lives, who lived fully and wholly through hurricane and volcanic eruption, through colonization and attempted genocide, through enslavement and rebellion, through rape and torture, through it all, you came together, great ancestors, surrounding each other with love, in your times of deepest wound together grew infinitely like Jed Babruha. And we thank you, for we knew you had to live and love and dance and fail and triumph and die so that we could live with great reverence to you. We call your names as you appear in our dreams. We call your names and pour water for you, hydration for our souls, and we say, Ibaye, Baye, Intonu. Ibaye, baye, intonu. We light this candle in memory of you. Your radiance shines in us vibrantly. May we never forget your light. And with that, call to you, spirit guides, as I bring you 
fresh flower. Letter to self. I did not solely inherit the intergenerational trauma. My hands were also passed down to me. The same hands that will mend wounds time and time again. Hands that bind up every seen and unseen gash of inferiority. And what matters most is that I don't have to do this alone. The healing part, the crossing onto the other side. What matters most is shame and guilt do not belong to me. Those are two old friends that cannot join me on the rest of this journey. I will have to leave them behind. They just don't fit for where I'm going. I have resistance, my resilience, and the audacity to heal. Have you ever wondered just where our mutual liberation can take us? What will I leave behind, cut off, burn down to get there? What wounds will turn into wisdom? How will I choose to lighten the load? These are decisions we must all make because the thriving of lineage unknown depends on it. I will never meet the man that saved my mother's life by the tree. I find peace that he would be proud of the fruits that blossomed from the seed he unknowingly saved. What will you leave behind? And what will you take with you when it is your time to choose? Stories of our mothers keep me holding on. Prayers of our ancestors keep me strong. Strength of life, oh, strength of life, empower me. Empower me, strength of life, oh, strength of life. Empower me, empower me. Return. I have walked so many miles. My feet chafed, my knees ache. I walk so far through the valleys and peaks of these mountains, through the deepest of sea rifts. I've climbed and swam and ran and wandered, all to return back to you, to return back to me. Where I go, when the high is like 25, too cold to cry. Outside and snow, and nobody seems to care or compromise. That's why I'm going home, going home, going home. I'm going home. Going home, going home, going home. Can I go home, going home, going home?
survive on such a cold cry. Oh, cry. And so, and nobody seems to care or compromise. That's why I'm going home. I'm going home. Desire becomes surrender. Surrender becomes power. Surrender to the hour. Remember your power. Desire for control holds you as Father Tom scolds you, shows you your immortality. Immorality consumes the masses like dandelion-filled grasslands or yerba bruja. A thousand hallelujahs to flowers picked too soon, plucked, oh goon, they've miscarried your justice. Smoking guns and dead roses, flesh lusting. They tried to bury me in dirt. Mother Earth requires a sacrifice. Sacrilege, take it in blood, they expedite. An extra eye sits in my belly. If you love me, don't tell me. Just let me grow in your light. How extra white, attempting to tame nature. Uniform confuses taser for gun. That gun was really a pager, a paper, a CD, a cigarette, a blunt rap, a prayer that sounds like, don't you die on your knees. Don't let them shoot you in your back. Don't beg a cop, please. You grew from concrete. And when you blossomed, the ground cracked. They tried to pull you from your roots and hang you like strange fruit while you were reaching for the sky, showering you with hate, livid you didn't die, living forever I am eternal, spring equinox and vernal, nature is my journal, my language universal, spend a lifetime in a verse and when you disperse you can return to the ether as flowers bloom beneath you, bequeath blue skies and sunlight, may your ancestors receive you, lead you in life towards safer roots, fertile soil and songs of truth, Surrender, like spells to words. I once spelled a bird and witnessed her come to life. After freeing her from a cage, I watched her take flight. Surrender, like suspended belief. Surrender, like a falling autumn leaf. Surrender, like the tides to the moons. Surrender, like the ocean to Oshun. Surrender, like the waters to the winds. Surrender to this spiritual hymn. Surrender like fire releasing embers. Don't you die atop that hill. Hold on until forever. And remember, desire for control renders you powerless. Surrender like sand slipping through an hourglass.
taking a moment to ask folks to take a breath and sit with the performance we just got to witness. Inviting our guests from Sage Seeker to turn on their cameras and be present in the space with us. And I am going to turn things over to the folks from Sage Seeker to contextualize this performance and share whatever information they'd like and invite you all in addition to listening to this informational session to think of any questions you may have, reactions you may want to share, et cetera. I will be monitoring the chat and I defer to our guests and the artists if they would like to take questions uh, via hand raise or other function. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much. Um, my name is Jasmine Augusto and um, I'm the, the founder and like lead curator producer. Um, I go by different titles depending on what I want to do for that project um, of Sage Seeker Productions, which is based in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and for, for many years, we, we have been, uh, I'll, I'll be inviting two of of our collaborators from this project on really shortly, but I wanted to just give a, a brief introduction to, to contextualize this project and then invite H Haben and Mashario on um, and ask a, a couple of questions. Um, so Sage Seeker Productions has been a company um, that I started in 2018, um, but I've had over 15 years of experience curating, producing, um, cultural events, festivals, working with many um, different folks, elders, teens, um, really from Hartford, Connecticut, but also branching out and collaborating with artists across the state. Um, and in from 2018 to the February of 2020, um, we did a, a series called La Sala Femme that really centered Black women, uh, women of color, queer folks of color, um, their stories and and centered around these collaborations between artists who had never worked with before, would never worked with each other before in the state, bringing together live music and dance, poetry and, and choreography um, into these intimate duets. Um, and in when the pandemic hit, it was like, holy shit, right? All, all of us were trying to figure out how to do uh, performance. Um, and Long Wharf Theater had been, I had in New Haven, Connecticut, um, had been an awesome collaborator in the past that we've been talking about what was possible with collaboration. Um, they were gonna host my first ever New Haven based La Sala Femme. Um, and we tried a virtual one in the May of, in May of 2020. And then by the fall, they were like, look, like we would love to essentially commission you to do a project of your desire. And it was kind of this open-ended thing. Um, they were like, we have uh, a budget, you know, I think it started with 10,000, it ended up being 15,000, but it was kind of like, what do you want to create with that? And you can have our theater space and um, our team to support you. Um, and I took a while to marinate on what I, what I thought could be important for this moment um, where we're in a space of, of isolation, um, going through a lot of uh, reflections. And I had come across this book called Remedios um, by Aurora Levins um, Morales, who is a Jewish Boricua and I'm Boric Boricua myself. Um, and she was she had talked about this plant, Jerba Bruja, um, and the plant, um, uh, despite ho like harsh conditions, um, even like the puncturing of the plant, like it literally would just survive and thrive throughout anything. Um, and even in the puncturing, the plant itself would protect itself and grow around that puncture. Um, and so she uses this as a metaphor for the history of Puerto Rican women through time, through generations. Um, and I kind of took that concept and I used that as kind of, um, as a prompt and as a, um, kind of question uh, as kind of an invitation to a number of collaborators to kind of get into this, um, you know, how could they share their own stories, uh, their own, you know, how did they connect with that um, in terms of their own stories around um, the lineage of, of 
of folks in the African diaspora survive, surviving and thriving throughout time. And my projects have always been experimental, have always been collaborative. So it's kind of like, here's some resources, here's some ideas, um, and then let's go with it. Um, and so this is kind of, it, this was a 15 minute excerpt of a, of a larger film that was about 40 minutes. Um, and so I wanna invite um, Hab and uh, Maria um, to come on and Mashario Brown. Um, Haben was part of that first. So I did the introductory kind of blessing at the beginning of the film and then Haben and worked with Colleen um, on a collaborative piece. Um, and Mashario actually was the lighting designer and helped um, uh, capture sound throughout the piece. So I wanna invite them on and I don't know if I can see you guys. I don't know why I'm not seeing everybody, but. Um, they are both on with cameras okay. on and Haben at least is unmuted. Okay, awesome. Um, so I just wanted to start with, if you guys could introduce yourselves really quickly. I think the reality is too that we're all, we all have day jobs. We all like have multiple ways that we survive and live in the world. Um, so just like a brief introduction. And then, you know, when you first received the invitation to be part of this project, what made you say yes to be part of this project? Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Haben. Um, I'm actually a licensed therapist and um, a vocalist and um, at times a painter. Um, and one of the uh, reasons that I can say I said yes, and which is ironic about this particular project because Jasmine has asked me to do past projects. She's invited me a number of times to do other projects. And I always was just like, you know, I don't know. I don't think I'm ready. You know, I haven't really been doing my art and keeping up in that way. And, you know, um, I think life has a very interesting way of snuffing joy out of us. Um, and I'm constantly reminded that art is there to replenish that. Um, and so for some reason, I was kind of just like overwhelmed by this invitation. And I immediately said yes and didn't know what I was gonna do exactly, but I knew I was at a time where release had to happen. And I took this as an invitation to let this be the release of that. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Haben. Mashario, Mash. Um, my name is Mashario Brown. I worked with Jasmine. I don't even. I, I can't even count the time. So anytime Jasmine calls, I know it's something that I, I already said yes before I even know what it is. So it's just the energy that she brings to anything that she's a part of. It's always positive. It's always something lifting. It's always fulfilling in my spirit. So I've always loved working with Jasmine. Just anything she calls me for, I'm, I'm down for it. I know it's going to be something good. Um, and it, it, as far as um being a part of the project and what I got out of it, it, it just showed me a different uh, perspective to people's lives and people's stories. Um, I'm from the Caribbean and the stories coming out of pretty much any immigrant community is always the same. And just to see that perspective and see that we have this deep connection, it, it was really eye-opening for me. And I've never gotten to see it from that perspective before. So that's kind of what I took out of the show and why I participate and mash what is your um like love like your work because i know that for folks that don't know you <laughs> like what you know what is the gamut of oh kind boy of your work um i mean i do production work i do sound and lighting mostly um i'm kind of getting more into the live live music sphere and recording but i i really do everything that anything that has to do with sound and lighting and production that's that's where my interest I'll jump on any project as long as it's around that scope of work. Thank you so much. Um, so I have one specific question for Haben, one specific question for Mash. Um, and then if we if we have a little bit of time, I would love if anyone um, who's watching with us um, this afternoon to ask uh, any questions that you have, um, if we have time. So, so Haben, um, what was it like to work with a collaborator you didn't know prior to this project? And 
you know, how did y'all end up creating together and forming a story that focused around sharing your mother's stories? So our experience, I would say, was a very special one. It was, it, it felt very healing in itself, like meeting for uh, kind of like rehearsals and like the planning meetings that happened before the actual performance leading up to that. I think both of us um, coming from African cultures also played an interesting role, even though we're from different countries, um, the similarities of experiences, um, the struggles of, of African women and, and where that conversation kind of led us to building up our actual performance um, of kind of like how <laughs> Mashario touched on the similarities, right? Uh, that we can all share, even though it may seem we come from separate worlds. Um, and we really wanted to sort of illuminate that part uh, throughout the performance as well. It's always kind of nerve wracking because I had not been in the performance space for a while. Uh, and so that was an interesting component um, where Colleen is like constantly creating, constantly performing. And, and there was really a beautiful sort of invitation to, you know, do what you feel, you know, do what feels right. There was still this, um, there wasn't a rigidity to it, which I think is what helped the both of us uh, collaborate in the way that we did and have it be more of a positive experience and a learning experience. Um, and rather than just a, a, it wasn't just a space to vent, right? Or just talk about trauma. It was, how are we actively healing this in this performance? What does liberation really look like if we could design it ourselves? Um, and so I think it, it just opened up a beautiful collaborative space and the goal seemed, we seemed united on a goal. And I think that's what made all the difference in feeling more comfortable collaborating with someone I've never met before. Um, so for the, so I, I wanna let folks know that, you know, I only got to do a short excerpt of y'all's performance. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and, you know, what you could see this was kind of like the uh the conclusionary piece which mm -hmm. i thought was really beautiful um it was kind of like the lessons that kind of came out of this yeah um but the, the the it was probably the most like theatrical of the three um duets and um you know can i don't know if you can kind of describe you know, some of the elements that y'all brought in and why you guys brought those elements in, especially mm -hmm. because you have the most, so for those that don't know, it was a giant altar that was, <laughs> that was uh, designed by, by our homie Mercury and then split into four pieces. So there was a large central piece and then each duet kind of had a smaller altar that they were able to use if they so chose. Um, and it was an invitation and y'all really had the most items Mm. Um, uh, you know, all these different com elements that were added in. Can you talk to us really briefly about some of those pieces that you brought in and why? Yes. So uh, we really wanted to highlight like different fabrics, for example, um, in, you know, in our cultures, different fabrics have different symbols associated with them, even tribes or um, demographics are attached to certain fabrics in your clothing as well. And so that was a component that we did use. You'll, you'll notice Colleen is wearing Liberian um, pieces and I was wearing Ethiopian pieces. Um, so being very specific to our lands in that way as part of our representation was important for us to bring in. You know, there was elements of um, a certain type of dance that Colleen was also doing um, that is uh, completely connected to her culture. I believe there's even a harvest connection that was attached to the dance that she was doing and uh, the element of storytelling. So uh, my major piece in the beginning was I'm basically uh, telling the story of how my mother escaped Ethiopia during the dictatorship. And uh, we are doing it over a coffee ceremony, which is a traditional Ethiopian um, cultural, you know, uh, symbol. Um, not just coffee as like 
a product, right? But the 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 beauty and sacredness around ceremony and how coffee is used to honor people that come into your home, it is one of the the highest signs of respect. If if a homeowner sets out a coffee ceremony for folks, so that was the setting of our particular scene um, to pay homage to multiple pieces of our cultures um, and the and and what we grew up in right so even though we're far from home um, I came here when I was very young from Germany uh, but I definitely grew up in an Ethiopian household that was not <laughs> a secret to anyone or anyone that would come over you know my home was a very different space and and I appreciate the fact that that was part of my lived experience in being here um, and then obviously the symbolism behind the way we left the scene, leaving things burning, you know, there's incense burning, there's coffee still being made, was to speak to sort of the unexpected uh, kind of turn of events and, and things that can happen when people are fighting for their liberation or needing to escape um, and the things that we leave behind as a result. Thank you so much. I just mm -hmm. feel like all of those details are, are really important. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for sharing all of yeah. that. Um, we do have like five minutes left before they, <laughs> they close this off. So um, Mash, I just wanted to ask you, I know this was such a short thing. Um, Mash, I wanted to ask you, you know, how did you determine um, how to light each segment? And how is this different from previous projects? Because I know you talked about doing lighting and sound in general, um, but I know you know, I know because we talk and stuff that you do, you know, you throw a lot of parties, you throw different kinds of events that are not necessarily theatrical or in a theater type space. So can you talk a little bit about what that was like for you in terms of being able to, to play with their lighting system, why you chose what you chose and how it changed over the course um, of the production? So um, most of our lighting design is kind of collaborative for the most part when we were having those pre-meetings and those rehearsals, um, I drew off of the stories and kind of like the atmosphere that the story set. Um, for instance, uh, having stories they were like traveling through a desert almost. So you kind of try to recreate that type of uh, light. Um, and we just kind of took that idea and kind of worked with what looked good on camera and what looked good on the set and what could basically bring the whole performance Together. So it was really collaborating with the storytellers and the performances to make sure that what we were, what I was doing, what everyone else was doing was complementing their stories and complementing how they wanted to be seen. Um, so it was just really kind of trying to keep, have a keen eye and focusing on really what was being said and how it was being said, and how the performances flowed, and you know what what. You almost come, almost imagine what it looked like if you had to try to recreate that, if that meshes with their idea that comes to us and agree that where it is. So it's really about color. Hey, did Mash uh, um, freeze on you guys too? Yes. He did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay okay just checking um i know we have two minutes and we're gonna we're closing off now um i don't i don't see any questions in the in the chat but i wasn't sure if there were any comments or questions i do see um the comment from the ensemble of color uh so they said beautiful from one african to y'all it feels so great to hear folks talking about who i am thank you so i really i really appreciate that comment and that comment is really you know for hobbin and, and colleen um, and um, I just I just wanted to, to kind of reiterate um, that, you know, a lot of like black and brown Connecticut artists don't have, um, you know, we don't have a lot of the opportunities to work with major theaters to be able to work with, you know, very kind of like professional settings of things. A lot of my productions have been like 
like mash will bring in all the lights bring in all the sound will create uh, something out of a space that isn't particularly a theater and so i just want to shout out long wharf theater and and for theaters that are are interested in collaborating with folks um in their in their cities and their states that may not you know be traditional folks in theater um to kind of create these really these experimental pieces to be able to have the freedom to do that um, I think was really important for this project to be produced for everybody to get paid. Um, you know, the fabric, the fabricators at Longworth Theater, we were able to design and they helped to actually create, to build the altar. Um, you know, we worked with their head of production and, and tech folks to like be able to access the lighting system and the sound and all of that. So I think you know, those are really important when collaborating with folks in your community and thinking about that for those of, of you that are maybe in the audience that are presenters as well. Um, so just kind of wanna wanted to put that out there and thank you all so much for joining us um, with this and um, we look forward to connecting in the future. Thank you. We do have a tight time schedule just as we try to make sure that all of our artists and panelists and presenters have the opportunity to tech test and such. So we are going to have to shift gears to our next panel, but I did want to encourage folks to look in Whova at the performance page and at the agenda. There are materials from Sage Seeker Productions. We also will have in our networking time, one of the spaces is a debriefing space to discuss the performances and panels. And of course, Sage Seeker is invited to that. Um, so opportunities to connect, the goal is connection. Thank you all for your time. And we will see you at, uh, what is it, 1 p.m. for our conversation about community theater, theater in community, professional theater, et cetera. Thank you all.